Hello everybody. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. We are back once again with our weekly Q&A. Uh, Golf Cart Garage gets lots of questions throughout the week. We come here every week to talk about them, see if we can help some people out, see if we can answer some of their questions, see if we can save some people some money. We are live right now on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. This is Thursday, June the 16th, 12 o'clock noon Central Time. So anybody in the live chat checking us out, say hi, type something in the chat, say what's up Tim, uh, tell me what kind of golf cart you got, I'll, I'll get to you in a minute. We got a number of questions here, this is, actually, this is actually episode 39, this is the 39th time that we have done this. Uh, like I said, I am Tim, with the, I'm, a, I'm a big part of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer at Golf Carts on a Garage. Gearheads On Demand is a service where you can actually schedule a phone call with me if you need to talk to me or if you feel like you need to talk with me or one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage about a golf cart related issue. If you're having some problems, you can call up or I mean, I'll call you. You schedule a time that's convenient for you and I will end up calling you and we'll talk about it. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description uh, that will take you to the scheduling page and uh, you schedule it at a convenient time, I'll call you at that time and we'll discuss your issue and see if I can help you out or at least steer you in the right direction. All right, well we got a number of questions today so let's get started. The garage is now open. Question number one. I tried testing my inductive throttle potentiometer by checking for a change in resistance while pressing the throttle. I did not get a change, replaced it, and still see the same result. It was is disconnected while testing, so I now believe that it may have to have current going through it to stay connected for the resistance reading to change. Is that correct? Yes, the the to test the ITS, it is a what is called a proximity switch. The metal rod goes through a a hole, and depending on the position of the metal rod. That changes the signal that goes to the IT to, that goes to the controller. So you you can't test it with with no power hooked up. It's got to have everything hooked up in order to be able to test it. You test it with it all connected on the ITS. And and the test is you test it on the black wire. There's a, you got a white wire and a black wire. You put one probe on the black wire of your of your voltmeter, not ohms. We're not testing for ohms. We're actually looking for volts. You also said that you were testing for resistance. We're not testing for resistance. We're looking for for volts here. So you put your probe on the black wire and then you put your other probe on the negative of the battery pack, the, the B minus on the battery pack. It's, and then you press the gas pedal. As soon as the solenoid clicks, you should have approximately one volt when the solenoid clicks. And then you press the gas pedal all the way down. When you're on the floor, you should have approximately 2.7 volts. Now you're going to give or take 0.5 in either, on, in either one of those, but it's going to go from 1 to 2.7, give or take about a half a volt or something in there. You know, that would be how you would test the ITS. And if it doesn't show those readings or nothing close, then your ITS is, is not any good. Okay, let's see, number two. My secondary clutch wobbles. What would cause this? It goes through clutches fast. Well, I mean, the obvious things that come to mind on that would be, to me, would be, is it possible that it's, uh, you know, the bent shaft? Because that secondary clutch is mounted onto a shaft. So could that shaft be bent? That would be one thing. Another thing, is it possible that you have somehow acquired misalignment in your belt? Like, is your belt misaligned and uh, because of maybe bushings are out or something and your rear end could be cockeyed in a way or something? I don't know. That would be the that would be the obvious things because a secondary clutch shouldn't wear out unless you're running, unless your car is like highly modified with some some really high horsepower or something. Uh, secondary clutches tend to work pretty good when everything is correct. So something is something is off if you're getting a wobble. That's for sure. <clears throat> Number three. When I put my easy go into gear, sometimes I hear a grinding noise, then it goes into gear. Also doesn't go very fast. Well, 
stock gas golf carts, they're not very fast. So what, how slow is slow on that question? But as far as putting it into gear goes, what I have found on any golf cart, any gas golf cart, if you go real, real slow when you're trying to put it into gear and you just go real slow and it, there's going to be a spot there where you, you're going to hear the gears grrr, kind of clattering and hitting. That's why you need to be, when you're going into gear on a gas golf cart, you need to be deliberate. You need to be more deliberate in going into forward and then more and then deliberate going into reverse. I mean, don't hesitate. Like you get ready to go to reverse, go all the way to reverse. And when you're ready to go to forward, go all the way to forward. Otherwise, you will get some noise and some gear clatter if that's what you're talking about. If you're hearing some other, without me being there, being able to hear the noise, that's the only noise I could think of that would, that could be happening. So uh, other than that, I'm, I'm not really sure. Let's see. Number four. I have a 2006 club car utility cart. When trying to start the car, there is a, de a delay of anywhere from two to 30 seconds before the motor turns over and starts. Different positions on the throttle pedal can aid or hinder the motor turning over. <clears throat> well, what I would do is uh, if you don't know how to crank your car in neutral, you need to figure out how to crank it in neutral and see if you can duplicate the problem by cranking it in neutral and watching your starter generator, like open the seat with the car cranked in neutral and then touch the accelerator pedal and see if when you're getting that hesitation, see if that starter generator is actually trying to move. <clears throat> it's just not, or if, it, or if it's spinning inside the belt, you know, to see, because a lot of times people don't realize it, they hit the gas pedal and the starter generator is actually spinning inside the belt because the belt's a little bit loose. Sometimes it makes a squealing noise and that would alert you to it, but sometimes it doesn't. So I would want you to, to make sure that the hesitation that you're talking about is actually happening or if the starter generator is just spinning inside the belt or if it's straining and then after a while it, it, it pops the motor over the compression stroke. I'd want to clear that up first. Number five, I have a 2007, that's the letters for a Yamaha Drive, 48 volt cart that doesn't do anything when I push the accelerator pedal. I am an electric motor shop and I'm trying to repair this cart. Well, if it doesn't do anything, you mean no click or nothing, then the first thing that I would check would be the pedal stop switch under, under the accelerator pedal. On a Yamaha, it's really easy to get to that stop switch. There's an access plate under the floor mat. Luckily, it's very easy to take the floor mat off of a Yamaha. Uh, believe me, easy go in club car is not that easy, but Yamaha, the take it, removing the floor mat is, is relatively easy, and there's an access panel that doesn't require any tools to take off, and you can see the pedal stop switch. Well, if I was getting nothing, I was getting no solenoid click or nothing, then I would be examining that pedal stop switch first. That would be the first place I looked. Now, after that, you know, we'd, we'd go somewhere else, but Okay, number six, the forward on my 2000 Club Car DS is not working and the switch is not that old. The reverse is fine. I cleaned all the contacts. Well, my first question would be, if, it, if, it, if it's running in reverse, that means the solenoid is clicking or it wouldn't be running. Okay, when you're in forward and you hit the gas pedal, does the solenoid click? If the solenoid does not click in forward when you touch the accelerator pedal, then you could have a micro switch on your forward and reverse switch this out. You could, your forward micro switch could be out if all your contacts are good. So that would, that would be how I would, I would approach that right off the bat. It's just I need to know if the solenoid is clicking in forward. Okay, let's go over here to see if we got any live chatters. I'll check real quick. Looks like we're good. Anybody in the live chat, go ahead and say what's up, Tim. Whenever you can, I'll get back to you. Let's see, number seven. This is from Jason. Hoping you can help. My gas cart is not starting and battery isn't holding charge 
when it was starting. I replaced the starter generator about six months ago with one from Amazon and I think it might be shot. The battery is full and tested at 13 volts. The solenoid is new and it's, it's uh, getting 13 volts as well. Traced back to starter and it is also pulling 13 volts but nothing is firing. Do you think I possibly got a junk starter and do you guys have these coming in? I searched but they are all out of stock. Let me know what you think when you can. Thanks. Well, you're all right, Jason. A lot of things are out of stock right now. We're doing the best we can, just like everybody else, uh, with supply chain issues and everything else, to trying to get things back up and running as normal. But a lot of things are out of stock now. From what your your question, when you say 13 volts, you're, so your your battery would have 13 volts at rest. I mean, a 12 volt battery could easily show 13 volts just sitting there at rest. Now. I would want to know what your battery is showing after your car's running. Like, go ahead and crank it up because you said it's not charging the battery. Well, I want to verify that. Crank it up and then tell me what's on your battery. It, what you, you should see, I'll tell you what normal operation would be. As soon as you crank it up, you should see that battery voltage start slowly climbing. And it should climb above 14 volts and hold somewhere in that area probably between 14 and 15 volts. If it's not doing that, if you're staying at 13 volts, then you might have a bad voltage regulator. It might not have been your starter generator at all. could have just been your voltage regulator. That's going to be separate from your starter generator. So that, that little square thing with a hole in it, uh, it's got a few wires connected to it. But it's uh, separate from your starter generator, but it's responsible uh, for charging your battery. So that may be the only problem that you have. So that's where I would be looking there. Number eight is from Carl. I have a 2000 EasyGo TXT 36 volt golf cart. For last month, the car has not been connected. Having car lifted after I got it back, it does not accelerate smoothly. Foot to the floor and it barely moves. Batteries hold a charge, but something else is wrong. Thank you for your time. 2000 EasyGo TXT. What I would want in that case is I would want battery readings before you start to move. And then when you say it, it's, it slows down, how slow are we talking about? Because uh, in 2000, you could have a couple of different types of electrical systems. And one of them could be an electrical system where the, mo the end of the motor had a speed sensor on it. So if you're slowing way down all of a sudden, it may be speed sensor. If you're slowing, if you're just progressively slowing down, that's why I would need your battery readings just to make sure that you don't have one of your batteries dropping out that's causing your, your loss of power. So that's where I would want to, to be looking there first. But like I've always, like I always say, I always have to eliminate batteries as being the issue right off the bat. Let's see, number nine. I have a Yamaha, raised it four inches, didn't want to have to get new tires, toe in is way off. How can I fix this without spending more money? Well, to adjust toe in, the only thing you can do is you, you, you adjust your tie rod ends. Click on a Yamaha, you've got one going to one side and, and one going to the other. You have to loosen the jam nut, the lock nut, and then you, you, if your car is towed in, then you're going to want to screw those in, and so it would force it to tow out a little bit. So you're going to screw those your tie rod ends in, and then put the lock nut back on it, and on both sides. You know, obviously get get them on, done on both sides. And proper toe in is going to be one eighth inch. So that's very very little toe in. It, you know, is proper toe in. In fact, what I do when I set toe in on a golf cart is I set them both even like I make you know the you you measure from the back side of the tire halfway up to the other side to the of the back side of the tire halfway up measure that distance and then go to the front and do the same thing halfway up inside of the tire halfway up inside of the other tire measure that distance I make them both even first because that's easier to do than trying to figure out one eighth inch so make them even, and then once you've got them both, both even, grab the two tie rod ends and just turn them just a little bit until you see them move in just a little bit, because one eighth inch is very, it's very, very small amount. 
Let's see. Number 10. This is from Terry. I have an older gas powered cart that I bought used. The starter does not always activate. Could it be the starter or is there a starter relay? There's the way that I would approach that the same way all the time. You got there's three things in play there. That if the starter does not always activate, there's three common possibilities. These are the common possibilities. Could be other things. I mean, I'm I'm in, I'm not even going to go into the obvious ones like you have a loose battery connection with because because that could cause that too. But check that obviously. Check your battery connections. Make sure your battery connections are clean and tight. Uh, the first thing would be your stop switch, pedal stop switch. There's going to, your accelerator pedal, no matter what kind of gas cart you have, is going to be the first thing it's going to do. It's going to hit a micro switch somewhere. It might be right at the pedal like it is on a Yamaha. On an easy go, it's at a different place. Uh, it's close to the solenoid. So there's going to be a micro switch that's going to get activated. That's the first thing I would check. You just ohm that out. You can just ohm that if you want to because it's just an on-off switch. That's the second place is the, the solenoid itself. You know, if you're getting power to the solenoid uh, on the activation circuit, which would be the small post, not the big post, the small post, and the solenoid's not clicking, then that, that could be your problem. The third thing I've seen that would cause a, an intermittent starter turning over of, on a golf cart would be brushes in the starter. I've, I've had a golf cart where, I don't know, if you look at your starter, the starter generator, there's going to be some rubber things on the side of it that are that actually seal up where the brushes are that are rotating inside the, where the armature is rotating but the brushes are right inside where those rubber caps are uh, a couple of times i've found that the brushes when once they get too short and you can you could push on one of those rubber caps with a piece of wood you just put pressure on it and you're actually going to be pushing the brush or you could take the rubber cap off and put a, take a piece of wood and just kind of give the brush a little help. And a lot of times you'll find that that's where your short is, or maybe not a lot of times, but sometimes you'll find that that's where your short is. Uh, so it could be in your brushes, in your starter generator, your solenoid, or your, pe or your pedal micro switch. All right, let's see what we've got going on on Facebook and YouTube. Looks like Facebook's all right. Nobody in YouTube chat. I'll come back again. Okay, let's go to, looks like number 11 now. My 2013 EasyGo RXV has a relatively new battery, 2020, so don't believe my issue is battery related. When I depress the brake, usually a small click is heard when I depress the accelerator pedal to either go forward or back. Currently, when I go through this process, the click isn't heard and it leads to no power in either direction. Should I leave it short period, becomes operational, but is 50-50 at best. What might I check or advice that you can provide? Thank you. Well, I can tell you this, if you, if you get on Google and you plug in common easy go RXV problems, there's all kinds of information on the most common problems having to do with easy go RXVs. In the beginning, they had even more than they do now. But some of the, some of the very, one of the things that keeps coming up for an easy go RXV is a solenoid uh, problem. The, and it, apparently it still happens to this day. They, they, they have a, a reoccurring solenoid issue. And I believe there's even a solenoid on the motor brake. So if you're not, the click that you're talking about, that is a solenoid that's, that's making that noise. So that would be, considering what it says on the internet about, about this, uh, that would be where I would be looking first. And plus that wouldn't be a very expensive thing if it just turned out to be a solenoid that, that's not being activated uh, or, or intermitt intermittently being activated. Okay, let's go to number 12. I have a 2000 club car and there's a wire with a yellow fuse case in the middle of it. It hooked to something on one end, but not the other. Is it supposed to be hooked to something on both ends and just broke off? If so, do you know where? Yeah. 
yes, I do know where. The, the wire with the yellow fuse holder, one end of it goes all the way into your onboard computer. Your car has an onboard computer. The other end of it connects in the center of the back of your charging receptacle. That's where it fell from. That's where it corroded and fell out from. If you'll look at your charging receptacle and then open the seat and look at the back side, right in the center on the back side is where that wire fell from. That wire is directly goes directly to your onboard computer and without that wire connected, your car is not going to charge. So you're going to need to figure out what you need to do there. If you can reconnect it, uh, that would be good. I mean, you might have to resolder it or you might have to get a new charging receptacle. I don't know. It just depends on how bad the damage is and figure out why it fell out. You know, it probably corroded for some reason and, and fell off. Let's see here. Number 13. Charger is not showing any amp ampers when first plugged up. My golf cart has been charging great until just a few days ago. Can you help? And it looks like you have a PowerWise 2. Because there's a picture included. That's kind of cool. Anyway, I'd have, I'd have some questions. This is, this is what I would do. Unplug the charger from the wall. Okay? Unplug it from the wall. No electricity. Okay? Plug it into your golf cart and then wait for a couple of seconds and listen. Does your, do you hear a click in that charger? What it is is that golf cart chargers are DC activated, not AC activated like in the wall. They're DC activated. They have to click that solenoid, that relay inside the charger, has to click in order to turn the transformer on. So even with it out plugged into the wall, if you plug it into your cart, it still should click. Okay. If it doesn't click, then I would want to hear. I would want to see what your battery readings are. I want to make sure your batteries are too low to turn the charger on. Your battery pack can be too low in voltage to activate that relay inside the charger. So I would want to know that. That would be another reason why it might not be coming on because your your batteries are too low. A third reason that it might not be coming on. I've seen this uh, many times is that the outlet where it was plugged into the wall, a lot of people are plugging these chargers into their garage, you know, because uh, their garage is, you know, is where you park your golf cart. And a lot of these outlets may be G GFI outlets. They may be ground fault interrupter outlets because of, you know, for wet environment. And the, and the outlet could be popped or the circuit breaker where that outlet is associated to could be popped. And so in other words, the outlet's not hot. So you need to make sure your outlet's hot, make sure your battery voltage is up high enough, if not, it could be something as simple as replacing the relay in your charger. And the way that you could, you know, verify that would the easiest way to verify that would be to just take that charger. It's very, very common uh, to find another easy go with that plug. Take that charger and try it on somebody else's easy go and see if it works or not. You know, we can eliminate that charger as being the problem right off the bat by doing that. Okay. Number 14. We're in the market for a cart for use in our hilly neighborhood. Interested in your opinion on new versus used. And if I go the used route, how would I go about getting guidance on all the upgrades, the sequence instructions, etc.? Chad Peterson. Well, that's going to be, you know, depending on a lot of things, mainly, mainly budget, you know, because new cars are very nice. I mean, you got lithium cars available now. Uh, all three manufacturers are going to have some kind of some type of lithium uh, system. Uh, the new club car, uh, two forward facing seat, Liberty and Onward are, are all of those with the lithium pack. They are awesome. I mean, so but you are looking at quite a hefty price tag on there. So it, it really just depends. Do you want something now and you want it to be top of the line? and you want it to be nice with no maintenance because you don't have to hardly do anything with lithium you just gotta you know charge it every now and then there's no added water or anything like that so the the maintenance on these new lithium cars would be very very little or do you want to you want to go that route or do you want a project you know because you can you know get a regular used car and then you can put lithium in it yourself 
but that's going to be a pro it's going to be a project you're going to have to learn a few things you're going to have to decide which lithium company you want to go with you're going to have to decide how many amp hours you're going to want so uh, it's going to be a, a little bit of experimentation and stuff involved uh, that would just be up to you you know which which route you would want to go now but like i said if you needed it now then all those all those new cars are nice they're they're really nice there's a lot of information on the steps to take too if you wanted to take on a project. There's a uh, lots of information here at Golf Cart Garage on the steps. If you if you wanted to take on a project and do it yourself, one of the first things I always say is just replace the controller. You know, decide what you want your end game to be, but go ahead and replace your controller because that's not going to hurt a thing. You know, just by replacing the controller, it's not going to hurt a thing. You can put as big a controller in there as you want, and then you'll be ready for whatever motor you decide to go with later on down the road. Uh, and you can go, you can replace the controller and the solenoid. Get that out of the way. But that would definitely be the first step. And then you go with the motor, and then you go with the body and all the other stuff that we were talking about. Number fifteen: Is it possible for the power control from the pedal? to cause the easy go golf cart not to move. The power control from the pedal. I'm not exactly sure I understand the question, but if you're talking about the potentiometer and on an easy go, the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal is the first thing it's connected to is the potentiometer. If you're asking me if the potentiometer can cause a golf cart not to move, the answer is yes, indeed, yes, it, definitely. It, it can cause a golf cart not to move. Uh, I would need, I would have a number of more questions that, to ask you to see so we could, you know, figure out what, what it is you're talking about there. But uh, if you're talking about the potentiometer, the answer is yes, it could cause a golf cart not to move. Okay, number 16. This is from Donnie. I have a 2006 48 volt precedent club car and the speed has gotten slow. Good takeoff, but no speed. What could be causing it not to have the speed? It runs great, but no top speed. Let's see. All right. Well, Donnie, I, I would ask you this. It would be two things depending on how slow we're talking about. You said it has good takeoff, all right? Does that mean when you get on it and you you turn the key on, put it in forward, and you hit the gas pedal, it takes off real fast and then it abruptly drops in speed? Or, because if that's the case, then it would be, a, I would be leaning toward the speed sensor on the end of your motor. If that's not the case, if your golf cart has just slowly gotten uh, progressively gotten slower over time if that's what it is it's progressively gotten slower over time so, you know just slowly you know uh, th then I would be going toward then I would be leaning toward M cores being the issue uh, let's see you were what year was your cart 2006 48 volt precedent well now you gotta understand club car has a computer that they could plug into your car and they could actually look at your M core on their computer and tell you whether or not your M core is going wide open or not. And they could also diagnose if it was if you they could read your fault codes and see if you've been throwing up a speed sensor fault or not. Because if it's the abrupt drop, then it's going to throw up a fault code, and they could read that code for it. Yeah, they'll charge you for it, but I mean it'd just be very easy and accurate for them to do just by plugging in their computer. They could they could diagnose your M core and your speed sensor faults, you know, real quickly. Let's see. Number 17, this is from William. What makes the charger fuse trip? Charges about five minutes, then fuse trip. I have an older club car. It doesn't have an OBC. There is a sticker that says power drive plus. Do I need a new charger? Okay, you got some Got some issues here with your question because if you have a sticker that says power drive plus that means that it is a 48 volt system if it is a 48 volt system then you do have an obc 
you do have an onboard computer if this is a 48 volt car. Uh, it's a it's a 48 volt region cart, and there is an OBC involved. Uh, now, as far as what can cause your your circuit breaker, it's not a fuse on your charger. It's a circuit breaker that trips. There's a couple of things that, that's been my experience that I've seen will trip that every time. And one of them is a bad diode. You can have a bad diode inside the charger and you plug it in and not only will it, the, the circuit breaker trip, the charger will actually try to go backwards. You know, it's, it's on zero at first. Well, watch your needle, plug it in and see if it goes backwards and then circuit breaker trips. Or does it come on and, and run for a while and then trip the circuit breaker? Well, anyway, it could be a bad diode, but I would also want to know what your batteries are doing. I mean, is, is, it, is that charger trying to charge a really, really dead cart and it has just a weak circuit breaker? It could be that also, because a lot of times those circuit breakers, the more they flip, the more they trip, the weaker they get and the easier they are to trip. You know, if, they, if it happens all the time, they just get weaker and weaker. So you might just need a new one of those. But uh, I'd want to know uh, more about the fact that you, that you said it didn't have an OBC first. All right, let's go over to YouTube and see what we got. We don't have anybody there. Anybody in the live chat say something over there. Go over to Facebook. We don't have anything going on there. Anybody on Facebook say something. Uh, don't forget to go to golfcartgarage.com. Look for this logo. This is Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2. Dave's got doing some interesting stuff over there. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Dave. Uh, you can enter to win cash and prizes. Let's see. Also, don't, don't forget to that I am Tim with Gearheads On Demand. If you are interested in an appointment with me, a phone call, or a video, click the link in the description, where and that will take you to the scheduling page where you can schedule a phone call or a video session where I'll take control of your camera and your phone and I can see what you're pointing at in case you think you need something I need to see in order for me to help you with. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not, but it, it might, sometimes it helps when I can see what kind of golf cart. A lot of people don't even know what they have and, and a lot of people, the video comes in handy for just uh, straight up identification purposes. Let's see. You got somebody on Facebook, Bruce Hutchings. What's up, Bruce Hutchings? How can I follow you on club carts? Okay, and what do you mean there, Bruce? How can you? Uh, club carts. Not exactly sure I understand the question there, man. Let's see. Well, I guess that looks like it's going to be about it for me this week. I want to thank everybody for watching. We will be next. We will be back next week with another episode. Next week, next week will be episode 40. Uh, we'll be back at noon Central Time live on Facebook and YouTube next week. Yep, don't look like I'm going to have anybody in the live chat today. All right. Well, I will thank everybody for coming. Thank everybody for watching. I will see everybody next week. Uh, the garage is now closed. <laughs>